Welcome to AS and A level chemistry. Our topic for today is chemical bonding. Now we are very familiar with this topic because of our IGCSEs, but let's just do a quick recap that why does chemical bonding happen in the first place? So we know that all elements they want to gain a stable electronic configuration. A stable electronic configuration is one in which all their shells are full. So in order to do that, they need to either gain electrons or lose electrons or share electrons with each other. That's why chemical bonding happens. So what we are going to see today is different forms of chemical bonding and we are going to delve in into some very interesting topics around chemical bonding. So first topic for us today is ionic bonding. Now um, ionic bonding takes place between metals and non-metals. So f for example uh, we know that metals they lose electrons to gain stability because let's see if you look at the electronic the conventional electronic configuration of sodium uh, which has 11 electrons it, it is 2 8 1 2 8 and 1 so it has one electron in its outermost shell this is the valence electron the valence electron is the electron in the outermost shell so the uh, so sodium will like to lose this valence electron because when it loses it only has two shells which have the first one having two electrons and the second ha having eight electrons and we know that this is the maximum number of electrons uh, these two shells can have so uh, so so by losing this one electron sodium will gain a stable electronic configuration and it will form the sodium ion which is the Na plus ion and then a non-metal like chlorine which has seven electrons in its outermost shell so it has seven valence electrons what it will do is it will it will um, gain one electron because it's you know that it has two options over here it can either it can either lose seven electrons completely to gain stability or it can gain one electron to gain stability now obviously the more feasible option is to gain one electron uh, to become stable so it will gain one electron so when it gains one electron this becomes 288 now it's stable so this will form the Cl negative ion now that's why sodium ions can bond with chloride ions because you can see that when sodium loses an electron a chlorine atom can pick up that electron and upon picking up that electron it forms the chloride ion while the sodium forms this while sodium forms the sodium ion so then these two bond together and we get NaCl which is sodium chloride now you can see that Na plus and Cl negative they have opposite charges and because they have opposite charges they will attract each other because obviously opposite charges attract like charges repel so there will be an electrostatic force of attraction between them and this electrostatic force of attraction is called an ionic bond so so there will be an ionic bond between Na plus and Cl negative ions forming NaCl which is common salt so this will form an ionic bond now this is exactly what ionic bonding is about metals react with non-metals to form com to form salts to form compounds not salts but to form compounds and ionic compounds basically so how do we represent this ionic bonding using dot and cross diagrams so a dot and cross diagram is basically a diagram uh, where where we uh, only only draw the outermost shell so if you look at the if we if we take the cross if we take all the cross electrons for for a sodium atom and we take all the dot electrons for a chlorine atom so first we have to make square brackets then we write Na over here in the middle and we'll only draw the outermost shell of Na remember only the outermost shell of Na so we know that initially the outermost shell has one electrons but when sodium uh, one electron but when sodium loses this one electron the new outermost shell has eight electrons it has eight electrons 